And welcome back to coverage here of the Innistrad Championship. Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Chion. Paul, starting off a tournament two and three is really not where you want to be. It can even kind of get you down, you know, I'm just not feeling it, that type of thing. But winning all your rounds after that to get to nine and three, that's where you want to be. And that's exactly where Luis Scott Vargas is. He had a tough start to his tournament, but it's really turned the ship around. And all of a sudden, he finds himself facing down Zachary Keeney, who's also at nine and three. And this is a mirror of sorts. They're both on Is It Epiphany Ball. You know, it's one of those things where when he had that start, you know, we were talking and he, it, it, I, I just thought he was eliminated. I thought he just checked out. He was done. Yeah. No more. That's also a Luis Scott Vargas thing. Like... <laughs> He'll message Paul and I after he missed one. Oh, well, dead, can't win, you know? And then right. it's like, through a few hours later, he's like, hey, I'm live for top. We're like, wait, what? Like, if he says yeah. he's dead, don't listen. He, he's right. just feeling bad. Yeah. And, but uh, uh, yeah, if the, either of these two players are live for top eight, and especially in the sense that if they can win out, they win this round, they go to 10 wins. Two more rounds after this, that's 12. That's it. No, There's no controversy, no tiebreaker. You're just in. But uh, that's three very tough rounds to win in a row. So let's see what happens here. It looks like the first big play of the game is unexpected windfall, windfall from Keeney. Yeah, and, and that, he finds, that's... wow, a second epiphany and a second windfall as well. And he's already got epiphany and behold, in foretell. So this is some real action here for Keeney. And you can see here, Luis going for the main phase windfall. He absolutely needs to kind of keep up with the mana that Keeney has generated here by resolving his windfall first, does not want to get his windfall divided by zero here. Okay, well, both players have, have resolved windfalls. The only difference though, is that Zachary Keeney has more cards in Fortel. He's invested his mana early, and now he gets to be the first one to fire off Alrun's Epiphany. He did have to use a treasure to do so, and he did not hit a land here. So he can't actually play another one. Well, yeah, but he does He does have a Behold the Multiverse. Uh-huh. I'm wondering if he wants to fire that off or if he wants to cast this Unexpected Windfall first. I think given the, the fact that Zach has so many copies of Epiphanies available, he was just trying to use that to continue to develop a man advantage, right? Sure, he used a treasure, but if he can hit a land drop off this Epiphany, that's going to put him far ahead in this matchup because what the control mirror is all about is the per it's all about hitting your land drops and being ahead on mana. Right, and he is now way ahead on mana. He did hit a land drop thanks to the unexpected windfall and of course two more treasures in the stockpile as well. Yeah, and you can see the pressure these players face. They Luis is now going to put Alrun's Epiphany into the Fortel zone and cross oh. his fingers here. And and I'm mm. wondering, is Zach just gonna go for it here? He drew the iteration here and now he can just go take two turns with Epiphany. He's going for it. There it is. Alrun's Epiphany is gonna get copied. The spike field hazard is gonna kill one of the birds here to try to make sure that he doesn't just die. But still, that's two turns in a row. That's going to be very difficult for Luis to overcome. Yeah, because keep in mind, Zach's going to have two turns. And in those two turns, he can play Celestis, foretell Epiphany. And then on the following turn, he will have the mana to cast two more Epiphanies. So he's so going to take four just turns in a row? Yeah. Yeah, not much for Luis to do here. You know, he did use the hazard to kill a bird to try to keep his life total up. But four turns in a row, Jeez. not a chance. What a sequence for Zachary Keeney, making sure to capitalize on that mana advantage that he got, and it is paying off big time for him. And here I was thinking we were just going to be playing this nice, slow, relaxing control mirror, jockeying for position, <laughs> casting some card draw spells, and Keeney just turbocharging here and winning what I think is his actual sixth turn or Luis's sixth turn here. Wow. Really impressive win there for Zachary as he picks up the first game and uh, puts Luis in a very tough position now at nine and three. You know, neither one of these players wants to pick up the loss. Yeah, I mean, of course, at any time during the tournament, but here particularly, you know, it puts you in very, very shaky territory where you still have to win your last two rounds and then you're going to have uh, four losses and, and, no guarantee of a top eight by any stretch. Yeah. 
both of these players need to basically win every single match to make sure that they are kind of the drivers of their own destiny here, right? Yeah, so, that's what you want. I mean, that's the most you can ask for at this stage in a tournament, right? Is that you get to be the one to decide whether you make the top eight or not by you know, your play. Yeah. All right, both players have kept here in game number two. Let's get back underway. Luis starts things off with a lance, so does Keeney. Nothing else going on here. Is there gonna be a smoldering egg? Yes, there is. Luis Scott Vargas a... has smoldering egg down first. Kind of an ideal start here for Luis, right? Turn two egg, um, turn three iteration, but doesn't want to run into a Juari disruption here. So passing instead and probably going for it next turn. Yeah, he's got divide by zero as well, just in case Keeney goes for something. And we see Never. some real patience here by Scott Vargas. He's just gonna say land go, leave up that divide by zero. And once again, Keeney's content to just play a land and pass the turn back. Another expressive iteration here for Luis and their smoldering egg picking up two counters. Needs to get to seven before it becomes Ashmouth Dragon, which will end the game oh, very quickly. Oh, and look at quickly. this. Keeney, look at the timing of this. I love it. Knowing that Luis wants to go iteration into exile land so that he can cast divide by zero, choosing to respond to the iteration and then going for the windfall there instead. So really, really a heads up play here from Keeney, just choosing the right timing here so he doesn't get his uh, unexpected windfall divided by zero there. Yeah, there was one window where he could do it and he hit it exactly. Well done, Zachary Keeney. Now he's got gold span dragon on the stack. That's gonna get divided by zero. So that'll stem the bleeding here and put the smoldering egg up to five. That expressive iteration will transform it next turn, Paul. Yeah, and Keeney did keep some number of fading hope in his deck, so um, we're likely going to see him use that soon. Here we go. Expressive Iteration is going to put a second copy of Holebreaker Horror in hand for Luis and transform Ashmouth Dragon. It's ready to go. He got Teachings of the Archaics into his hand. Which, not ideal when you have seven cards in hand. Right. Hmm, Luis is going to stay home huh. here. He wants to be able to potentially block a gold span, I assume. That's what it looks but like. it's not going to happen. Fading Hope is going to put that Ashmouth Dragon back into hand. That's a lot of work that just disappeared. <laughs> Luis is going aggro on his hand here. And I think, Zach, yeah, Zach's just moving in on the dragon here, and I don't think Luis has an answer. Zachary Keeney playing beautifully. Gets Goldspan Dragon down. Attacks. He's got a lot of treasure, and of course, those are double treasures now, so he has a ton of mana available. He can cast Divide by Zero and Sod coming, assuming that it's all in the same kind of chunk. Ooh, there's a Divide by Zero for Luis. I think is it just Holebreaker Horror time? Or I, I, I think here? it is, but keep in mind, I mean, Keeney does have access to a divide by zero. And not only that, I mean, we're going to be able to Aurin's Epiphany this turn as well if he wants to. I mean, this Goldspan Dragon is giving Keeney access to so much mana. I mean, we're looking at 15 mana available here from Keeney. Yeah, that's going to be very tough to deal with. You said it before, Paul, that, you know, the name of the game in the matchup is having a big mana advantage. You know, most of the time, these decks are very good about finding things to do with mana. It's just having enough of it. And as you can see, Zachary Kinney winning that particular race quite easily here. Yeah, Luis you know, I'm looking really... at the two Holebreaker Horrors oh. in Luis's hand. Are those good enough? I mean, Ooh, they're Demon a little bit Bolt. slow, but th this, this was big. Th Luis now has found an answer... To the Goldspan Dragon. Right. He can finally get it off the battlefield. But remember, Divide Zach, has, mm -hmm. Zach ahead, has multiple ways to protect this dragon. He can bounce the dragon. If Luis has some kind of counter spell, then he still has that solid coming here as well. Oh, jeez. And I think, I mean, this is probably going to do it here, right? Luis only has access to A divide by zero. And Zach now has Iteration Epiphany set up here with all that mana here. Yeah, you know, I think that that Galvanic Iteration is just it. Oh, what a quick...
dispatching of Luis Scott Vargas here from Zach Keeney. Incredible victory there for wow. Zachary Keeney.